Welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 30th day of November. And today's topic is titled, A Tremendous Truth, as we continue through the um, series of topics from James chapter 2, and we've already covered verses 1 through 4, and today we're going to cover verse 5. Amen. And uh, before I get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, praise the Lord for that. And we're going to start with today's scripture song. And the last one for this month is a um, lengthy one. And so Brother Dean writes up here at the top of this page. Um, uh, he says here in this note, he says, This next song was written as a melody. It has the two prophecies from Isaiah and their fulfillment, verses from Matthew. We put it at the end of November to remind us of who Jesus is. As we go into the month of December, the world may not know who Jesus is, but I am glad I do. Amen. And me too. I'm glad I do. Hope you are glad you too do too. Amen. And then he writes up here this question. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Hope you do, friend. All right. So we're going to um, conclude this month with this uh, scripture song from Isaiah 7. 14 and then 9 6 and then it's fulfillment in Matthew 1 21 and 23 So press play here and sing along with brother Dean and sister Patty. Amen Isaiah 7 14 Therefore the Lord, Lord himself shall, shall give, give you a, a sign Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel Isaiah 9 6 for unto, unto us, us a child, child is born unto us, us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Matthew 1, 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 23, Behold, a virgin shall be born child, child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. A son shall call his name Emmanuel, 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 and shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. She shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus, 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 for he shall save his people from their sins. Behold, a virgin shall be child, and shall bring forth a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, 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 which being interpreted is God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. All right, I wanted to get that to stop before it reached the end, so I didn't have to go all the way back and flip through all the other ones. Amen. So we'll try that again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for this last day of November, the 30th. And today is the last of this series of topics from James chapter 2. 
And it is titled, A Tremendous Truth. And it says here in James 2, 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? James 2, verse 5. And today's author again is uh, Rick Gravely. And he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Rossville, Georgia. So let me read you what he wrote today on this uh, last topic, ending this series of topics from James chapter 2, and titled The Tremendous Truth. He writes here, uh, one verse today is one, or excuse me, our verse today is one that has been uh, often misinterpreted. This verse is not teaching us that God has chosen the poor to be saved and rich uh, to be lost. Uh, Zacchaeus was saved and Luke 19, uh, verse 2, says he was rich. Uh, salvation has nothing to do with the riches of this world, right? Uh, but is on the basis of the work of our Savior on the cross. Amen. Uh, you see, a man can be poor in this world, and he can be rich in the next. Amen. Rich in Christ. Uh, he can also be uh, poor in this world and poor in the next, right? Uh, the same is true about a rich man. He can be rich in the world and poor in the next world. He can also be rich in this world and be rich in the next. Again, this proves that wealth or impoverishment has nothing to do with salvation. Amen. That's right again. Uh, however, there is a tremendous truth in our text. The Lord has not excluded the poor from his field of service. He is not like the partial usher uh, in this chapter that elevates one man above another because of his financial state. In fact, the Lord has chosen to use men who were poor in this world to show his mighty power. Uh, most of the apostles came from a poor background. And remember, salvation holds riches that are far beyond the riches of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. So, praise the Lord. So, I hope you're rich in Christ, and even if you're poor or rich in this world, uh, and you're not uh, rich in Christ, and you're poor, and you end up poor in the next life, and perishing in your sin, well, it doesn't do you any good. Your riches can't uh, go with you, so your stuff can't go with you. So, make sure you get right with Jesus today. Amen. All right. So, that is the end of the series of messages on James chapter 2, which we started on the 27th with the two visitors, and then there was the snooty usher, which was from verse 3, and then uh, yesterday, uh, what right do we have, which was from verse 4, and then today concluding uh, with verse 5, a tremendous truth, amen. So whether you're rich or poor, you too can have eternal life and be rich with Jesus, amen, and have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and praise the Lord. All right, so that is the end of uh, the Baptist Bread devotional topic. Amen. And so now we'll get into today's hymn and hymn story. And I was looking at it uh, through the two different hymn books here. And it seems to be by the same uh, author here, but uh, the stanzas are different. So I'm going to have to look at, at it and see... Uh, um, which one's uh, right here? So, um, so it's titled in the Great Hymns of the Faith book, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. And it was written by Edwin Hatch, who lived in 1835 to 1889, and Robert Jackson, who lived in 1842 to 1914. And so I'll go ahead and do the one from the hymn from the hymn book first and then read you the one from the other book. Oop, hold on a second. Turn that down. Don't want you to hear that. Alright, so a second. Alright. See if I can try to sing this here. Three Breathe. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life. 
I knew that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. Pure. Okay, I'm not getting where going. Alright, so, sorry about that. I'm just going to read you the stanzas because I'm not too familiar with the, this hymn. So I'll read you the stanzas from the Great Hymns of the Faith book and then read you the stanzas from the other book. And uh, I believe this, this is the one we normally sing if we sing it in the, the church congregation. Uh, uh, hymn singing part of the service. Alright, so uh, stan there's four stanzas here. And it says here in stanza one, Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one, uh, will one, uh, will two, do and to endure. Um, bre uh, stanza three, breath of, breath, uh, breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine. Till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Hmm. Pretty good there. So that was the one from the Great Hymns of the Faith book. And now I'll go ahead and read you the one from, the, from this other book, uh, the Then Sings My Soul, book two book and this is titled breathe on me uh, again it's written by edward hatch and then it says here bb mckinney so um this one says holy spirit breathe on me until my heart is clean let sunshine fill its inmost part uh, with not a cloud between and then stanza two says holy spirit breathe on me my stubborn will subdue Teach me in words living flame uh, what Christ would have me do. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Fill me with power divine. Kindle a flame of love and zeal within this heart of mine. Holy Spirit, breathe on me till I am all thine own. Until my uh, will is lost in thine to live for thee alone. And then the um, chorus says, breathe on me. Breathe on me, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Take thou my heart, cleanse every part. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. So that was the, the hymn there from both books. And this was written in 1878. And the passage is from John 20, verse 22. So go here to the passage, John 20, 22. Alright, so John 20 and verse 22 says, um, and this is uh, the Lord, uh, so we'll go back to verse 9. For fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said uh, so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And verse 23, Whosoever, uh, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So verse 22 is the one we focus on when he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. So that means that they were made alive. Amen. And uh, praise go uh, God, made alive spiritually. Uh, their souls were made alive and given the Holy Spirit. All right, so that was the passage. Just wanted to read the context of what was happening there. It was after Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to them. Amen. All right, so go ahead and read you the hymn story here. All right, so... 
This is the hymn story behind the hymn, Breathe On Me. It says, John 2022 has inspired several great hymns of aspiration. This one, Breathe On Me, was written in 1878 by an Anglican priest named Edward Hatch, who deeply impressed with the words of John 2022, wanted to be included in our Lord's blessing to his disciples. Hatch published his hymn in a privately printed leaflet entitled Between Doubt and Prayer. During his lifetime, Hatch was one of England's greatest theologians. He became a scholar of Pembroke College, Oxford, and won the Ellerton Prize in 1858. He was professor of classics in Trinity College, Toronto, from 1859 to 1862, when he became rector of the high, the high school at Quebec. Returning to England in 1867, he was appointed vice principal of St. Mary Hall at Oxford. He gave the famous uh, Bampton uh, lectures in 1880 and the Herbert, or the Hibbert lectures in 1888. Uh, one commenter remarked that Hatch's uh, religious poems were a beautiful supplement to his theology and reveal the depths and tenderness of his religious life. In 1937, inspired by Hatch's hymn, the Southern Baptist hymnist B.B. McKinney wrote an updated version which he titled, Holy Spirit Breathe on Me. It is essentially a paraphrase of Hatch's hymn. Okay, so that explains that. So, it's uh, essentially a paraphrase of Hatch's hymn. McKinney was a uh, Southern Baptist pastor, educator, and songwriter who published over 500 hymns. He would have undoubtedly written many others, but for his sudden death in a car accident in 1952... Uh, Jesus' words in John 20:22 20, have inspired a uh, number of similar verses. Wesley's great hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, echoes this thought in the stanza that says, Breathe, O oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled bre- uh, breast. Let us all in thee uh, inherit. Let us find that second rest. Amen. All right. Um. So, continue on, it says, Alfred Vine wrote a hymn often sung to the tune, O Master, let me walk with thee, that says, O breath of God, breathe on us now, and move within us while we pray. The spring of our new life art thou, the very light of our new day. And he says, my favorite treatment of this theme is um, Be- Bessie uh, Head's 19... Uh, 14 hymn, O Breath of Life, which says, O Breath of Life, come sweeping through us, revive thy church with life and power. O Breath of Life, come cleanse, renew us, and fit thy church to meet this hour. May our Lord answer all these prayers. Come now, Lord, and breathe on us. Amen. Uh, Pretty interesting uh, hymn story behind the hymn there, Breathe on Me. So that's why there's Two different versions of it. One was the original was written by Edward Hatch, and then B. B. McKinney um, updated it and had an updated version. And uh, he said it was essentially a paraphrase of Hatch's hymn. So that's why there's two different uh, versions of this. So, all right. Well, amen. Okay. So tomorrow's hymn and hymn story is from the hymn "Softly and Tenderly," written by Will L. Thompson. And Will L. Thompson, and this was written in 1880, and the passage is from Mark 2.17. So we'll find out more about that hymn and hymn story tomorrow on this hymn, Softly and Tenderly. Amen. All right, so put that aside and get a drink of water here and conclude with today's uh, um, scripture song. All right. So, we're going to just sing today's scripture song, because it's a little bit of a lengthy one, and we'll end the month with just today's. Amen? All right, so, go ahead here and press play, and we'll sing this one more time. Amen. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord Lord himself himself 
shall give, give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us, us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Matthew 1, 21, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. All right, let's sing it out. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, and shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, 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 which being interpreted is God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me go ahead and give you tomorrow's scripture song. And we are starting into the month of December tomorrow. And this will be CD number 12 for the last CD for the year. And this is number 12. And there's 31 verses here. And so this month, uh, Brother Dean uh, did something different. He has the ABC verses. So he... Um, took a bunch of verses and um, went through the alphabet and gives a um, verse uh, with each um, letter of the alphabet. Amen. So that will be um, next month's um, scripture songs will be from the uh, ABC verses. And tomorrow is December 1st. And so the first one for December will be from Proverbs 18.24. And it says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. So that will be the first scripture song for tomorrow, the new month of December. Amen. And then tomorrow's topic uh, for December 1st will be titled, Stand in the Truth for uh, December 1st, tomorrow, the first day. And so the passage will be from Ephesians 6, verse 14. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's um, devotional topic. And then tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, Softly and Tenderly. Amen. So that will be the hymn story and hymn for tomorrow. And, of course, the book here is titled, Then Sings My Soul, Book 2, 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories. 
written by Robert J. Morgan. And you can find that somewhere on the internet or at your local bookstore. And then the Scripture Songs books, uh, song book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then finally, the Baptist Bread devotional books, you can booklets, you can order them online at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. All right, so that'll be it for today's broadcast. So uh, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him, and he's the only one that can give you eternal life and wash away your sin. So hope you'll trust him today. All right, well, Lord will, and see you tomorrow. For the first day of December. Amen. Alright. Bye for now.